Hey guys, Anitra J here from the Crafty Musician blog. I wanted to talk to you today about the eight steps it takes to become a full-time singer-songwriter. guys before we get off into this topic I'm going to let you know that if you want to follow along with me you can by clicking on the link in the description box below and the link is going to take you directly to an article that I have already written about the eight steps to become a full-time successful singer-songwriter so you can copy and paste the, those notes and take your own notes as well as as we go along in this video all right, so we're just going to get right off into it. I'm going to tell you this. The first thing you need to do to become a successful full-time singer-songwriter is that you need to be absolutely clear on what you want. What is your end game? What is your ultimate goal? What will you have done in your mind to say that you've accomplished your dream in this, um, in this career? That might be to um, make money licensing your music to film and TV. That might be to become the um, the hottest studio musician and to be able to support your family by being a studio musician. That might be to, um, to get a record deal. I don't know. Whatever your ultimate goal is, you need to have that in mind before getting off into all of the other stuff. Because without your end goal, without your ultimate end game, you're just going to be wandering around aimlessly without direction. You're going to lose a lot of time and a lot of money. So have your end game in mind and you want to start there and then make goals based on that end game. So for example, if your end game is to become a studio musician to, and make enough money doing that to support your family, well, first of all, you need to know how much money is going to take to support your family. How much money do you need to make a year to support your family? So that's the one thing you need to figure out. And the other thing is, do you have an instrument? Do you know how to play an instrument? Do you have, like, have you taken lessons are you skilled at whatever instrument you're playing you know where are you in in that progression so in looking at your end game you can then determine what goals you need to uh, create in order to get there in terms of being a singer songwriter I think it's imperative to have an instrument and learn it but that's just my opinion um, I'm sure there are other ways there are all sorts of ways to do this but to be a singer songwriter I think that you would have um, more opportunity and more access and you it would make things easier for you if you learned how to if you had an instrument and learned how to play it for example when you go up and you do open mics you don't have to depend on someone else or you don't have to depend on a track to um, to help you to do what you need to do. You can just go up there with your instrument, boom, you're got it, you're done. <laughs> so um, in the same same in the same vein, if you have a gig, you know you don't have to pay um, a guitarist to come and accompany you. You can do it yourself, and all that money goes to you instead of having to split it with someone else. It also helps to in your songwriting. And if you have an instrument, you can play along and sing along and see how that sounds. And it helps it helps you to, to write better songs, I think. It helps you to um, master songwriting and master your songs um, and be quicker at, in that process. So uh, that's what I suggest is get that instrument and learn it take the lessons you need to take and that brings me to step three is that you need to start writing songs <laughs> you need to start writing songs and you need to record them you need to put them lay them on an album get your cd out and start releasing your tracks i mean what's a what's what's an artist without their songs so that's something that really needs to be a priority if you're trying to become a full-time artist you really need to have awesome songs and you need to record them and you need to be able to present that to your would-be fans step four is to get a website now i suggest that you invest in purchasing your own domain and the reason being is that 
having your own website, www.anitraj.com, it gives you more credibility and makes you look more professional. That sounds a lot better than facebook.com slash anitraj as my official uh, online presence. And um, also, being on Facebook, having your own page on Facebook is great. Um, but unfortunately, you have to abide by Facebook's rules and everything you do on your Facebook page looks a lot like everything someone else is doing. So it doesn't give you a lot of opportunity to showcase your brand and your identity and um, what you're all about. So having your own website, you can better showcase your brand identity and you have more control over what your page looks like and the information that you, you disseminate on your page. You have more control over um, showing what you want to show first and the um, chronological order of how you want to display your material, you have more control. So that's why I personally recommend purchasing and investing in your own domain because you have more control. It looks better. You look a lot uh, pro more professional and gives you more credibility. And having your own website, it's your online hub to all things you. And it also allows you to communicate and capture information from your website visitors. You can um, introduce a squeeze page, and I talk about all, a lot of this on my website, but introducing a squeeze page on your website helps you to capture uh, emails. It helps you to capture the contact information of the people who are coming to your website. You can't necessarily do that on other, plat other free platforms. Um, not as well as you can on your own website. So step four, get a website and make sure you fill it up. Put your bio, put your pictures, put your songs, uh, put your show dates, uh, make sure you have a blog and um, your contact information. Those are the main things, but also have a way to capture email addresses of the people visiting your website. Those are the main things that you should put on your website. I also have an article dedicated to all the things that you need to have. I have a, what, 10 must-haves for artists, for your artist website. I'm going to put the link down in the description box for that. So be sure and look at that so that you can have a great website. Step five is get social. Now we're getting into the meat of what it takes to become a full-time singer-songwriter or full-time artist. And this is one of the big ones. Get social. Now when I talk about get social, I'm mainly talking about social media, but this also involves getting social in the real world as well. And so I'm going to first talk about social media because social media is one of the trends of, of today's day and age, I guess. It's one of the major trends. And if you are an artist, if you're trying to be what's hot, <laughs> then you have to go where hot the hotness is. <laughs> and the hotness is in social media, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, all of those platforms, you need to have a presence on those because that's where your audience is going to be. Now, I suggest that you start off small, start off with your favorite social media uh, platform, learn all there is to know about it and kill it and then move on to the next. That way you're you're um, prioritizing your focus and being able to focus on one thing at a time, I think will help you to be more effective in, in what you're doing and it'll help you to maximize your time better. So focus on one thing at a time, kill it and move on to the next, next one. So if you wanna start with Instagram, kill Instagram, learn everything there is to know about Instagram and be the best you you can be on Instagram. Then after you've conquered Instagram, after you've met your goal there, move on to YouTube, move on to Facebook or whatever, and just take it from there. But you should absolutely be on social media. <clears throat> the other thing is getting social in the, in the real world. Um, get business cards, get some postcards, get some postcards on community boards, in the coffee shops. Everywhere you can leave your information, leave it, um, join meetup groups, join the 
the um, business networking groups, join, even join um, special interest groups. Like if you're a vegan, join the vegan group or join support groups, get to know people, go to yoga class, go to fitness, fitness, uh, group fitness classes and get to know people and start to broaden your network in this business the more people you know the more opportunities you have so have your business cards on hand get to know people um, pass out your business cards and build your network and you should be doing that online and offline step six is to start booking gigs start off small start booking gigs they don't necessarily have to be paid gigs you can book a gig at your mom's house with your aunts and your cousins i mean just something that will help you to get the experience of being an artist and being a performer now you might you might just want to be a studio musician or you might just want to be um an, an internet musician you know i don't know what your goals are only you know that but um you need to start playing and you need to start getting comfortable with an audience whatever your audience might be now if your audience is an internet audience you need to maybe you can do some live shows who knows <laughs> i don't know you know i don't know what your special interest is like i said only you know that but this step is to just get comfortable with your instrument get comfortable with performing get comfortable with being who you are as an artist I have a resource on my website if you do want to learn how to book paying gigs there is a free course it's a four-day e-course and it tells you all there is to know about booking paid gigs so I'm also going to put that link in the description box as well but you need to start getting comfortable being the artist that you want to be and this is the step to do that step seven is to build a loyal fan base now this is it's so easy but then it's so hard <laughs> it's like easier said than done you know I'm gonna tell you a formula and it's going to be so easy you're gonna laugh at me but then the hard part comes in and actually doing it that's the hard part now to get fans you have to know who your ideal fan is and get in front of them and build a relationship with them okay so know who your ideal fan is get in front of them build relationships that is the formula and it's very simple but it is foolproof I'm here to tell you <laughs> it is foolproof now how to do it and actually doing that is another whole thing that's another whole beast and there are many many ways to build a loyal fan base I'm gonna tell you a few things that you can do here and I also have a resource on my website for how to um, target how to find and target your ideal fans okay so you can go to that and um, it's a worksheet and you can go through that worksheet and maybe you can come up with some ideas of your own on how to find your fans and how to reach them okay so this is what you need to do start a newsletter I suggest either mailer light or Mailchimp and you should start <clears throat> sending emails out to people start collecting email addresses I talked about that earlier in the video but start collecting email addresses and start a newsletter immediately and get comfortable with sending stuff out to your fans okay that is your newsletter your mailing list is going to be your lifeline when it comes to being a, a full-time artist so that is something that you need to focus on <clears throat> um, the other thing you can do is to create a landing page or a squeeze page and I mentioned a little bit about this also is a squeeze page now that is something it's like it's called a landing page you can call it a squeeze page or a landing page doesn't matter it is a page that people see when they first come into your website and it has nothing on it except for hello my name is Anitra J uh, I'm going to give you a free uh, music bundle in exchange for your email address there's a better more articulate way to say that but basically <laughs> you get the gist it is just a blank page with you asking them for their email address in exchange for something that's called a squeeze page because you're actually squeezing their information as they come into your website you're squeezing out their contact information so either they give it to you or not and they enter into your website 
easy easiest way to collect email addresses ever okay so start a mailing list um, use MailerLite or MailChimp there are other things you can do other uh, platforms you can try also constant contact <clears throat> The list goes on. I don't know, but I, I really like Mailer Light and Mailchimp. Get a squeeze page. Step three is to uh, let's see. Look at all of your channels where you appear online. That's all your social media. That's all your um, free profiles that you have. Um, every everywhere you appear online. Um, Noise Trade, SoundCloud, uh, your blog look at all of these channels and come up with a way to convert everyone on those um, that are connected with you on those channels convert them into fans <clears throat> and the the first thing you need to do is collect their email address <laughs> like I said your email list is your lifeline okay that is going to be the best way that you can communicate with your fans now some uh, some other artists are doing um, Facebook Messenger they're doing text messages um, <clears throat> those are those are those are other two ways that you can effectively communicate with your fans but the most popular way is to have that mailing list so that's the route that I'm going to take you down today and so somehow figure out how to convert all of the people that you're connected with on all of these social media platforms all of these all of these platforms online figure out how to convert them and put those measures in place <clears throat> and so and so that is how you start to build your fan base you have to communicate to them and build relationships okay so that is the whole idea behind building a loyal fan base is to start dialogue and actually have genuine relationships with people your fan base is built by one person at a time and I know that seems like the hard long way to do it but we're talking about your end game here we're not talking about uh, a fast quick <clears throat> way to earn money this is something that you are committed to long term and it's going to take your long-term goals is going to take your in-game strategy to get there okay so you you build your fan base by cre gen um, generating or starting dialogue and building relationships one person at a time <clears throat> and that's that's the whole idea behind collecting email addresses that's a whole idea behind starting a welcome funnel and that's also something that I recommend is when you start your mailing list when you you uh, start a an account with MailChimp or MailerLite or wherever you start your mailing list with create a series of welcome emails so that when people first enter your mailing list you're sending them automatic messages to get to know them and to have them get to know you so you're talking about your your journey here you're talking about who you are how you became what you are and where you think you're going what your end game is and how they can be a part of it and so um, I suggest to send a series of three to five welcome emails that are automatic it's called automated it's called auto responders and so as soon as someone enters as soon as someone joins your mailing list these emails are sent out immediately automatically without you even having to work so you can be asleep someone joins your email email list online somewhere and they'll get these emails okay so that's something that I I also recommend all right so the other thing is you can start running contests run some contests online and offline to attract people to your website and so that you can add them to your <clears throat> mailing list I have some ideas uh, on contests on my website so you can go there also to get some uh, some other ideas and like I mentioned before I have a worksheet that you can use to help you to come up with other ideas on how you can reach and target your specific ideal fans the other thing is be consistent I can't stress that enough you have to be consistent when you're sending out your communications to your fans because if you send out <clears throat> you send out an email one month and you don't they don't hear from you for another three months <clears throat> they done moved on 
they done forgot about you they don't have a clue as to who you are anymore you got to realize these people have their own lives they have struggles they have their own goals that they're trying to accomplish and if you are not you know exposing if 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 your music is not being exposed to them your artistry is not being exposed to them on a consistent basis they will forget who you are and then unsubscribe <coughs> from your <laughs> email list so you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're not consistent with sending out emails i, I do once a month but i'm seriously considering sending emails at least twice a month or if not weekly so that i can start to generate more of a dialogue with my fans to get them more engaged in what i'm doing with my artistry and to be more engaged in their lives because i just i have so many things i want to accomplish i have so many causes that i want to <clears throat> to do and it'll be fun to to get them more engaged so i'm considering personally sending out emails weekly or twice at least twice a month instead of once a month so anywho the idea is to just be consistent so that they will know and come to expect more from you as an artist i'm gonna tell you right now most artists are not consistent so if you can just get that one thing <laughs> you're gonna be ahead of the game you're gonna you're gonna stand out to them being consistent that's a trade secret right right there a lot of things a lot of things that I, I share most of you are not gonna do and so if 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 you decide to be committed if you decide to to do it you're going to rise to the top and you're going to stand out among your peers um, that's just the nature of that's just human nature you 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 get you like you you get excited about something and then you you want to do it you want to do it but then life happens and you just don't do it and that's where a lot of us artists get stuck and just being consistent and committed is one of the first uh things you can do to jumpstart your career the other thing is getting the latest book on the music industry and just um being committed to self-education that i think that's a, a very important important thing that's a very important factor in being successful is learning and constantly educating yourself on what's new what the new trends are and constantly thinking about how you can leverage new trends how you can leverage uh new ideas and um new innovations for your music step eight huh, this is the big one step eight is make the money work for you money is a huge factor when it comes to taking the leap into being full-time independent artist money is what either makes or breaks your decisions and makes or breaks you as an artist it's it's, it's money and how you manage it how you manage it so you need to get a handle on that you need to get a handle on your expenses how much you're spending you need to have a budget you need to get get yourself out of debt you need to get a handle on your money and that is very important if you want to become a full-time artist you need to figure the money out and make the money work for you so the first step when figuring the money out and getting a handle on that you need to pay off all your debt because you don't want <clears throat> there's a quote I think it's from the Bible it says he who borrows becomes servant to the lender so if you're in a lot of debt you're basically serving your creditors your life is dictated by your creditors and who you owe money to so if you have a ten thousand dollar loan student loan everything you do you're thinking about that's in the back of your mind and that's a heavy weight to have so my suggestion is to do everything you can to get out of debt so that is not weighing on you and that's not weighing on your finances so get yourself out of debt reduce your monthly spending you need to determine how much you're making per month you need to determine how much you're spending per month 
and if you're spending more than you're earning you need to seriously reconfigure your life because you'll never be successful in anything if you're spending more than you're earning so you need to get yourself a budget and you need to figure out how to spend less than you earn you need to start building wealth you need to start having a savings because I'll tell you something right now being an independent artist being full-time as a singer songwriter <clears throat> is unpredictable your earnings are unpredictable I've been doing this for some years so I, I do know what my seasons are and I know how to <clears throat> plan for for low seasons in the year but when you first start out it's going to be very unpredictable you need to have some capital set aside to to pay for things to um to in, to be able to invest in things there are a lot of things that you're you're going to need to invest to build your business and you need to have money set aside for that and if you're not <clears throat> building wealth if you're not saving you don't have a savings you're not going to do well because it's just going to be too stressful and you're going to get burnt out so you definitely need to get that all of that get your money under control define what your monthly expenses are make sure you're spending less than you're earning spending less than you're earning yeah okay <laughs> I thought I had that the other way around okay I got it make sure you're spending less than you're earning and start saving money and have some capital set aside it'll be good for you to decide how much you think you'll need to to have before you launch a career like find out how much it's going to cost to have a website find out how much it's going to cost to get your instruments your equipment how much it's going to cost to um to do monthly promotions for your for your music you know whatever your your goals are you need to find out how much that costs how much your your capital will be so that way you're not putting it on a credit card or getting loans out <clears throat> you already have it in place okay I also have a resource on my website it's called the income boosting spreadsheet and that helps you to look um, at your gigs look at your calendar and look at what you need to do in order to make the money that you need to make so that's called the income boosting spreadsheet it is you know what I put a link to that also in the description it's going to help you figure out what you need to do what gigs you need to take on and what how you need to supplement in order to make the amount per month that you need to make and that's that's the big thing is being an independent artist you need to first figure out how much it's going to take being a full-time artist I'm sorry you need to figure out how much it's going to take to live and support yourself or your family Per month and the key is are you going to make that amount per month or not w with your music and if not how are you going to supplement that and that brings me to the next part of this last section about money is you can supplement your income you can be a full-time artist and supplement your income you can do uh, teaching you can do uh, lessons you can do tutoring you can do you can write jingles you can write uh, songs for individuals <clears throat> you can license your music you can be a studio musician you can get cover gigs um, you can start a blog like me you know there are a lot of a lot of ways that you can supplement your income as an artist and um, that needs to be figured out how how would you handle um, seasons that you don't have a lot of income coming in how will you handle the unpredictability of being uh, an artist sometimes the money is uh, fluctuates it goes up and down and you need to be able to to handle that and, and you know what system do you have in place to support yourself in case that happens um, so those are things that you need to answer before becoming a full-time artist <laughs> I know it seems obvious but you know you don't think about this stuff beforehand and the last thing I have on here is to quit your day job 
Only you know when it's best for you to quit your day job. Only you know that. Maybe you'll never quit your day job. I don't know. That's up to you to decide. But in terms of being a full-time independent artist, quitting a day job, that was one of the things that I... I had on my on my go <laughs> on my goal sheet is to quit quit my day job and how am, how are we gonna support ourselves? My husband Rob and I we perform together and we do music together, so uh, quitting both of our day jobs was a big factor in you know our our journey. So uh, you need to decide what that what that's going to look and feel like for you. You need to consider it's gonna be very scary. You need to consider different things like self employment taxes. You need to consider health insurance. You need to consider uh vacation. You need to consider uh em- your emergency fund. Uh, there are a lot of things that you need to consider before quitting your day job. Um that will factor into you being a full time artist. So we're going to come to a close here. Those are the eight steps it takes for you to become a full-time artist, a full-time singer or songwriter. Um, Just to recap, we're going to go through all the steps again. Step one is to get clear on what you want, write down your goals, and be absolutely certain on what your end game is. Step two is to get an instrument and learn it. Step three is to write your songs and record them and be able to present them to your would-be fans. Step four is to get a website. Step five is to get social offline and online. And step six is to start booking gigs or to start making steps toward becoming who who you want to be as an independent artist, full-time artist. Step seven is to build a loyal fan base. And step eight is to get a handle on the money, make the money work for you and figure out how you're going to do things financially. Okay. And, you know, I've been doing this for some years now and I have to rinse and repeat. I have to go through these steps too, even now after I'm already a full time artist. So um, the last thing I have on here is to rinse and repeat. Think about how this all impacts you ongoing you know this is something that you need to come back and look at um throughout your career and to make sure you're still on task and to um sometimes you have to rethink your brand and re-strategize how you're um reaching your fans or maybe you're 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 going to change your whole look and feel and you have to go through these steps again rinse and repeat The main thing about being a full-time independent artist is that you have control and you have freedom to do what you want, when you want it, and how you want it. And that's the great thing about being in business for yourself. You need to look at being a full-time artist as a business. And if you can look at it as a business and using um, business essentials and tactics to support yourself and your career, you will go very far. So good luck to you. And we're going to close out and this, um, I have a quote here that I I would love to read to you as we're closing out. It's by Aristotle. For the things we have to learn before we can do them, we can learn by doing them. So there are no rules to doing this. That's the the main thing I want to um, get across. There are no rules. It's all about what you want and how you want to do them and what makes sense for you. So these are some guidelines that I'm giving you, but in learning how to do things, you have to do it. So get out there, put yourself out there, be confident in yourself and do it. Go over to thecraftymusician.com for any other tidbits and um, promotional and marketing ideas for your music. Thank you guys so much and I will talk to you soon.